Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Newscast. Today is Wednesday, October 12th, 2011. I am your host, Lou Mangello from WDWRadio.com. It's the place where Disney fans gather to increase their understanding and appreciation of Walt Disney World. Come by, check out the podcast, the blog, discussion forums, and lots more over at WDWRadio.com. I want to thank our sponsor for this week's newscast. They are our friends over at TouringPlans.com. Not only are they the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World, but more importantly, it's the place to go where you want to find out how you can save not one, not two, but up to four hours per day inside the Walt Disney World theme parks. They've got crowd calendars, wait times, customized touring plans, and lots more. And don't forget about, too, the Lines application for Walt Disney World and Disneyland. You can visit them over at touringplans.com slash WDW Radio. Before we get into this week's Walt Disney World's uh, news, uh, I want to start off first by saying thank you again to you guys. Uh, I learned this past weekend that uh, thanks to your support and the friendship, because I say that we are friends whether we have met yet or not, uh, that WW Radio was nominated for a podcast award in the travel category over at podcastawards.com. Uh, I am grateful for you guys going out and nominating the show, uh, but now I need your help. Um, Starting today, please go by and visit podcastawards.com. You can vote for WDW Radio in the travel category. It's located on the bottom right-hand side of the page. Be sure and use your valid uh, name and email address as votes will be verified via email. So also, you can vote once per day, every day, until Thursday, October 27th. And if you like, uh, please show your support. Come out and vote, and as always, please help spread the word again. That is over at podcastawards.com. Now, let's get into this week's Walt Disney World news, which is kind of timely because it's food and wine time, and the conversation always needs to turn to food. Uh, starting next week, or the, uh, whatever October 26th is, in two weeks, there are going to be some, t- some changes coming to dining reservations at Walt Disney World. Because uh, starting that day, there's going to be changes to the cancellation policy when you make table service dining reservations. This is something that's been talked about for a long, long time, uh, especially uh, on Twitter and Facebook and discussion forums about making reservations and sort of a, a possibly a penalty if you don't keep them and if you don't cancel them. Well, starting that day, additional table service locations are going to start using the cancellation policy, which is already in place at select restaurants and property. And what that means is this, is when you book a reservation at some of these restaurants, and I'll give you the list, you're going to be required to provide a credit card at the time of your reservation, and you're going to be charged $10 per person if the cancellation is not made at least one day in advance. So my understanding is that you'll have till about 10 o'clock p.m. the night before your dining reservation. If you do not cancel, you'll be charged $10 per person. Now, I spoke to some people at Disney today, actually, about this when I heard the news. What I am understanding, though, is if you make a reservation for seven, somebody's sick, they want to ride Big Thunder again, and you show up only with six, you will not be charged for the missing person. But if no one shows up and nobody cancels, you'll be charged on that credit card $10 per person. Now, prepaid locations are going to continue uh, that same uh, full prepaid amount. So if your guests are unable to honor the the reservations and you're unable to uh, cancel one day in advance uh, at places like Cinderella's Royal Table, the Spirit of Aloha, uh, hoop de doo and Mickey's Backyard Barbecue, if you don't cancel, you'll be charged the full price. It doesn't count the same way for the credit card location guarantees. Uh, Obviously, certain things like Fantasmic Packages, New Year's Eve, Victorian Alberts, they may have different cancellation requirements. And actually, if you visit the current Disney World website, they haven't updated it yet, but it does say that each has its own cancellation policy. So make sure you find out exactly what they are. Uh, Again, when you are booking your reservation, the prepaid locations, Cinderella's Royal Table, Spirit of Aloha, Hoop De Doo, and Mickey's Backyard Barbecue are a full price cancellation. So that means if you don't cancel or keep your reservation, you'll be charged the full prepaid price. The new and continuing credit card guarantee locations, and I'll put this up uh, list up in the show notes over at www.radio.com, are 1900 Park Fair, Akershus in Norway, Artist Point in Wilderness Lodge, 
California Grill, Cape May Cafe, Chef Mickey's, Citrico's, Crystal Palace, which is inside uh, the Magic Kingdom, Flying Fish, Garden Grill, Hollywood and Vine, Gico, La Cellier, no surprise there, Narcusi's, Ohana, Tusker House, Brown Derby, Victorian Alberts. Uh, I understand now the cancellation policy there is $25 per person and the Yachtsman Steakhouse. One thing new that Disney has added and is going to be adding when this takes effect is a new special phone line that only handles dining cancellations. So you don't have to worry about going through all the menus on the 407 WDW Dine. You can now call 407 WDW CNCL, like cancel. So it's 407 WW Cancel. That line is not to make reservations, only for cancellations. You can also book or cancel by visiting any table service restaurant podium, Walt Disney World Hotel front desk, concierge desk, or guest relations. You can also get through by calling 407 WW Dine. So if you are stuck over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, you're not going to make your reservation for Gico the next day, or you decide that you're not going to go the next day. You don't have to worry about calling. You could just go to a table service restaurant there or you can call that cancellation line and in- ensure that you do cancel your reservation. So this is something that we had talked about on the show a number of years ago, this idea of not penalizing people but making sure that they are responsible to keep their reservation because I think what happens is this. Many times, guests used to be able to, well, I say, well, you know what? I don't know where I feel like eating. So let's go book La Cellier and let's go book Yachtsman, and we'll just show up to one or show up to neither. Now, when you go on the Disney World Dining Reservation website or you call in, you are no longer able to double book. So they have now taken that out of the equation. But what was happening is this. People would make reservations uh, and then not have to worry about canceling because there was no penalty which would prevent other people from getting a reservation. And that's why sometimes you'll go into restaurants, they say they have no availability, and you'll find a number of empty tables because they're waiting for those reservations which may not show up. My question to you who are watching either live in the box or if you're watching or listening in iTunes or on YouTube or on the blog is, what do you think about this policy? Is it going to change how you make reservations? It is, is it going to make you, and I think it will by, by definition, will it make you more conscious about the reservations you make? More importantly, the reservations you keep or the reservations you cancel. Uh, Briley saying smart idea. Ray says great idea. John, good policy. Uh, Nicole likes the new ADR deal. Now maybe we can get into places that are normally filled up. Uh, uh, La Cellier is one that's come up a lot. Um, everybody seems to be saying it is a great idea. Some people are saying it's not going to change how we do things because we've always canceled. Um, but Jeremy says, yeah, this is something that has been needed for a long time because obviously I think we see this happening a lot. Uh, Box Escape Artist says it's not a problem. It's fair. fair. Uh, Haunted City says it's horrible for families with small, whiny children. So what I think that you're trying to say is that, you know, the kids have the meltdown at 4 o'clock. There's no way you're going to make your reservation at you know, Ohana or or Garden Grill or whatever it is. That is definitely going to play into a factor. Now, I wonder what happens if you are in Epcot, you can't make it there, and you go and say, look, my kids are having a meltdown, but at least I'm giving you the, the courtesy two hours before. Will they make special consideration? I, I don't know. The policy is what it is. And it's so for those people who are trying to book 180, three months, three days, three hours in advance, that those spots um, is open. So um, Ray says, in fact, whenever we called to cancel, cast members were sometimes surprised that we called. Uh, and I think that's it. I think because there was nothing that sort of would, would motivate you other than just common courtesy, which we should all have anyway, to call and cancel your reservation. So I like this policy. I think the $10 uh, per person is fair. Uh, again, because if it's a dollar, if it's $10 for a family, you still might not say, well, it's $10, I don't have time, I'm not going to worry about it, let's just keep it just in case. Now it's really going to make you think, hey, are we really going to be able to make this reservation for tomorrow? If not, let's cancel it, let's open it up for another family or another couple or another whatever that's trying to get in. Uh, Some people in the box, Pete Altamy says, it should be more than $10. Um, uh, Mickey Donald says, it sounds Fair for people with good children, bad for families with bad... There are no bad kids, just bad parents. Parents, No, but you're right. It, it's not that the kids are bad, but meltdowns and things um, happening. But yeah, people are saying this is good because it, it definitely prevents 
for the double booking. Yes, people, I'm sure, do things like Irene is saying. Uh, they play games with email addresses, the three-hour time frames, phone numbers. They have their wife. They have somebody else call uh, to do it. But uh, I, I think it is a good policy, and I am uh, impressed and, and pleasantly impressed that everyone who's watching at least live here in the chat room is saying that they like this policy um, because I think it is it really sort of benefits everybody and, again, will sort of make you a little bit more not only considerate for others but considerate because you don't want to get hit with that $70 charge if you're party for seven um, doesn't make it. Some people are saying it's not going to change how we tour a book, says Crisby. We always plan at the 180-day mark. We never had an issue. Chasing Castles is cool with this change. Um Let's see. Uh, I think this is great. Things happen, but it'll definitely make it easier to get into more desirable places. Uh, does this new rule apply to reservations we made back in September for our trip in December? That's very interesting because the policy wasn't in place. Uh, it just says that adjustments are being made to the Walt Disney World Resort cancellation policy beginning October 26th. Um, I think it's not going to change because when you made your reservation, you did not have to give a credit card. So if you don't show up, or you don't cancel, they don't have a credit card on file specifically for that reservation. So I don't think uh, that is going to change things that were made previous to October 26th. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of watching the chat go by, and uh, Magic City Mikey makes a great point. It should make walk-ups and same-day reservations easier. So I think it's a great policy, certainly a long time coming. The double booking, now the cancellation policy, going to make it easier and I think more enjoyable for everybody to get a meal. Uh, I would love to continue to hear more of your thoughts and comments. Please come by the blog over at www.radio.com, our YouTube channel, uh, and leave your comments there. How this may change, is it going to change how you guys book your reservations? How do you think it might affect uh, you or other people? And I wonder too, when people are booking, um, the awareness of it so they understand because it may change how you sort of wake up 180 days out and start making your reservations. Uh, I do have one other bit of news as long as we're speaking about uh, some of the resorts. Um, it's a bit of news, a bit of rumor because it hasn't really been sort of rolled out as yet. And uh, what I have been hearing is that there may be some changes to not how you eat, but how you surf. And I don't mean literally surf, but I mean surf on devices like this. Because I, what I've heard is that uh, if you've been to Walt Disney World recently in some of the uh, hotel lobbies, you may have seen a wireless network pop up called Disney slash guest. Uh, what I understand is that network is being tested and may officially be rolled out to guests at many hotels and DVC resorts. I've also heard in the last couple of days that it is already available to those guests staying at Bay Lake Tower. My understanding of what may be happening is this, is that Disney may be testing and then eventually rolling out free wireless service at many, possibly all, of the uh, Disney hotels and resorts and Disney Vacation Club properties. They're going to have a, a sort of a, a, a pared down, a slower service that's going to be free, and then higher speeds that are going to be offered uh, for a fee. I think this is going to this, this is for possibly a couple of different reasons. One, because we're now becoming much more dependent on not necessarily laptops, but these when we come to the parks, if you want to make your dining reservations, whatever it might be. It could also be, too, about what's coming next. And I start thinking about things like the next-gen technology. Some of these things that are being brought in to the parks and the resorts to enhance and personalize the guest experience Maybe we need to have, maybe we're going to need to have web access um, on our phones and other sort of mobile devices. Uh, again, there's going to be supposedly two levels of service. There's going to be a free service that allow you to sort of get on, probably check your email, do some of the basic things. But if you need to do more, if you need to upload photos, videos, stream, maybe, um, get on Skype, FaceTime, you'll be able to FaceTime maybe with some people from home while you're at the resort you'll be able to have those higher speeds at a price. And I don't understand what the price is at this time. I also don't know if those higher tiers are going to be uh, brought into the current Disney Vacation Club perks where you, where you are already getting free internet or if that's going to change at all. Um, complimentary service, though, is actually already available at some place on property. And you may not know that Disney's Wide World of Sports 
actually has free wireless. So if you really need to get on the internet for free, you can go there. But it's also available at other DV DVC resorts outside of Walt Disney World, including Vero Beach, Hilton Head, the Villas, Villas at Disney's Grand Californian, and Aulani has it as well. But it would be nice to know that you can go down into the lobby or even right from your room at your resort, especially if you're going back. Yeah, the kids are off for a week from school, but you still have work to get done. You can sit in the room or sit in the lobby and uh, and get a, get some work done or some play done online. But more importantly, what's this going to mean for us as far as the entertainment value? What possibly does Disney have lined up in the future that's going to necessitate? Or if you want to engage in some of these other things, having that wireless service available for free on your phone there in the resorts and possibly in the parks as well. Um, this is something that people have been asking about and waiting for for so long. Red Wing says, why did it take so long? Uh, Nolan says, I'm curious as to what the price for the faster connection will be. Uh, is it going to be more than what's already charged in the rooms, which is $9.95 per day? Um, people are saying, yeah, now I can bring my PS3. Um they're talking about uh, people asking, is it going to be in the rooms? Is the high speed going to be in the rooms or is it going to be in the lobby? Where is it going to be rolled out? I'm not sure. I have heard people saying that they're already, they're installing wireless boxes in the rooms. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't been able to verify this again. This has not been confirmed as officially being rolled out and sort of an official rollout date. As soon as we find out that, uh, I'll certainly share it with you. Rooms, uh, Zeus is saying rooms may still be a charge. Um is going to be part of the pre-planning your future trips when it will interact with your phones, fast passes, reservations. Beth, absolutely. I think that's why you're going to start seeing this because when this next gen, we don't know what it is. We know it's going to be very high tech, very personalized. Is it going to involve your smartphone or other devices and need sort of an always on wireless connection? So those devices can do what they need to do, even beyond our personal experiences as well. But again, dining reservations, planning for future trips, photo pass, pictures, the possibilities by having the wireless everywhere uh, certainly are endless. And yes, we wonder, uh, is, does this mean that it's coming into the parks for free as well? Time will only tell. Um, so people saying, yeah, now I can bring my eye touch. Uh, I'm so glad to stars and moon. So people are, are very, very happy about the Wi-Fi coming into not just the resorts, but hopefully the parks as well. So my question that I want to leave you with is what is the bringing in of Wi-Fi going to do for you now? Let's forget about the next gen, the technology that Disney may bring in. How will that affect how you visit the parks or how you spend your days or evenings? Are you going to bring your laptop now? And if so, for what? Is it going to change how you use your mobile device? And if so, for what? Are you going to be there playing uh, you know, games online? Is it to check your email? Is it to somehow enhance the Disney experience while you're there? Uh, whether it's with games or other technologies or websites that you want to visit while you're there. Maybe you want to download the Disney World Trivia app for the iPhone. Play some Disney World Trivia while you're in the parks or waiting at your resort. That That's just one of those many possibilities. So... People are saying I would use it to Skype directly from the, my park, from the park to kids at school. I can keep track of of uh, other people. Um, Alamode says more people are now going to walk into you because everybody's on their phone. Victoria Keats says Instagram for the win. Uh, Eagle Mom says they've always brought the computer, download pictures. Now not having to pay for Wi-Fi will be fantastic. And Airspoon says watching WW Radio live in the Magic Kingdom. Um, you can also check uh, different applications like Lines with our friends from Touring Plans. You can submit and check wait times as well. Again, lots of lots of, of opportunities and possibilities there. Would love to keep this conversation going again on the WDW Radio blog or uh, over at youtube.com slash WDW Radio. Don't forget to join us every week live here in the box, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at wdwnewscast.com. And again, if you can't catch it live, you can catch the replay on the blog, on YouTube, or uh, in the WW Radio feed in iTunes. Hook me up. Link me up over on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangiello. We are Facebook.com slash WW Radio. And again, come by, check out the site, the blog, the iPhone apps, audio guides, lots more over at WDW Radio.com. Again, 
Big thanks to all of you for the good stuff, the great, amazing stuff you did last week during the 40-hour show and the more than $17,000 you made for Make-A-Wish. I've been in touch with the Make-A-Wish people, and they are ecstatic about the amazing work that you did. So my sincerest thanks to you for that. And of course, for the nomination over at Podcast Awards, please don't forget to visit podcastawards.com every day between now and October 27th. And you can vote once per day for WDW Radio in the travel category. Thanks again to our friends over at touringplans.com for sponsoring this and every show. And of course, thanks to you, the box people, for joining me and taking time out of your busy day and busy week to uh, to let me share my passion with you. So until next time, I am Lou Mangello from WDW Radio. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching. See ya.